Hello everybody, this is Dustin with Hinterland Customs and this video is an intro video for a new build series I'm going to be doing. It's going to be called the Battle Tank Centennial Build and the reason why is because on this date in history, September 15th, 1916, was the f it was the first time a tank was used uh, in warfare. And uh, it was this tank here. Or there's a couple different variations of it. This is the Mark I male. Uh, it was used uh, going into the Somme. The Somme battle had already been going on for a while, and the British were trying to uh, produce uh, some armor, something that could give them um, more effectiveness. Uh, as as you all know, World War One there was quite a stalemate with the trench warfare and such, um, and it was very hard to move forward and gain ground with. Uh, between landmines and barbed wire and trenches and machine gun placements, uh, nobody could really budge in certain areas and such. So they wanted to make something that they felt maybe could give them an upper hand. Um, this is a photo here from the magazine. That that photo is of the first tanks right before they went out to battle. And there's you see jerry cans littered around on the ground, and they're all getting fueled up, ready to go. Um, I might do a diorama for that. I was going to do a trench diorama, and then um, what I'm really focusing on, probably for this build, I, we'll go to this too. This is Vine Scale Modeler, 100 Years of Tanks, and I'll just show this real quick. But this guy, when he built a Mark I, I like what he did. He hand-painted it, and he did that because he wanted to stay authentic to how it was painted back then, which was, it was actually hand-painted. People weren't standing around with airbrushes painting it, so... I thought that would be cool. There's his finished product right there. And uh, he's got the pattern, looks like spot on from the photos I've seen. So the camouflage that they used on these, uh, unfortunately, um, <laughs> they got covered up with mud. So they abandoned the camo pattern uh, pretty early. So they have a few pictures of ones that are camoed. And then later on, they just painted them. Um, they got one in a museum there overseas. Uh, I believe it was just a dark brown. But uh, anyway, yeah, it was used, uh, they took it into what was called uh, Fleur's Corselet was the first first place they were going to use it at. If I'm pronouncing that right, I apologize if it's wrong. Uh, in the background here, I've just got some different reading material. Some of these books I've had a long time. I like studying about World War I. Uh, and then in the middle there, um, those are books by Osprey that you can pick up. Uh, they've got a lot of a lot of great detail in them um these these books it's got a picture of it camoed in here too but they've got a lot of technical detail showing some different things um there's there's a really good one right there another one of the camo and uh anyway just thought that that would be good to pick up i really enjoy reading and uh studying the history of some of this stuff and it gives me a gives me a little better context to work with um, you know, every time I build something, I like to have some kind of story behind it, um, no matter what it is, for the most part. So, anyway, that's, uh, I think I've about covered it. So, that's that's going to be my build. We're going to be building, I'm going to be building the, the Mark I male. And, uh, yeah, it's just uh, hard to believe, 100 years, you know, seeing how much has happened. And I think so, some of these books, uh, oh, they, they're just kind of... I don't know it's kind of haunting when I've read some of these different books. These guys after World War One, they called it the War to End All Wars, and but a lot of these guys knew better. You know, they wrote in a lot of their writings that they felt like it wasn't ending anything, but it was just starting something else. It was going to continue, and as we've seen with history, it does. Excuse me. Um, there was one more thing. Here's a here's a quote I want to read. Um, it says. I can make armored cars safe and unassailable, which will enter the closed ranks of the enemy with their artillery, and no company of soldiers is so great that it will not break through them, and behind these our infantry will be able to follow quite unharmed and without any opposition. Leonardo da Vinci, 1487. So the, the idea for this, as you can see, goes way back. Da Vinci's credited with, you know, he designed helicopter and tank and a million other things but uh he had an idea and i even saw a prototype of a of a tank of world war one 
Um, it wasn't built by the British. It was actually built by the U.S., but um, I can't remember what company made it, but it looked similar to Da Vinci's. It looked like an old coffee pot that just, like, was just a tall kind of tapered cylinder with little vent things that all over it where guns could stick out. It, it looked kind of funny. But uh, that's been the interesting thing, too, studying about the tank, is seeing all the different prototypes. You, you would not believe the designs um, that would look nothing like this one. I love the looks of this tank. Uh, the British were the first ones to, to build a tank and have it into warfare. This tank, I like it because um, it's a simple design, but it uh, it has no face to it. It's just all machine. It's I call it the faceless beast because it's just a big tracked monster. And um, anyway, I, I just always like the looks of the, the rhomboid track design. And uh, I thought... Um, I just thought it'd be cool to build one and start it on the day that uh, marks the 100-year anniversary. Um, anyway, I think I think I've covered everything here. So as I go along, I'll try to add as much historical context as I've found, you know, with some of the different videos. But uh, and I know that uh, a lot of people that sub my channel are auto enthusiasts or just build clean cars or whatever, and that, and that's fine too. I. Um, I, I build other things, so so this is an example. I'm going to be building something different, but uh, I appreciate all my subscribers and people that have supported me and my channel. Um, I've been on YouTube a year now, um, and uh, I've come quite a long ways. You know, I've, I'm starting to do branch out a little more and do some uh, things with techniques and stuff that I I didn't know that I was really even capable of doing. Um, so that's that's been fun to just keep trying new things. Uh, this will be a challenge. You know, I have not built this tank before. The other tank I built was a Walker Bulldog, which was produced in the early 50s um, for that Korean War diorama I built. So that's a that's a totally other other deal. So anyway, um, really looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be fun. Um, and just, uh, yeah, I think the diorama, I think I'll just do... I might just do the jerry cans. I might do a trench warfare. I'm just I'm just not sure yet. But I'm gonna build the tank first, and then we'll see where the diorama comes after that. But this will take me a while for sure. And uh, anyway, I again appreciate everybody supporting my channel, and um, I will see you guys down the road. Happy 100th birthday, Tank Hinterland Customs signing out.